So James Harden back yet again with another fantastic performance as he leads the Sixers to their first win of the season. And oh, by the way, Kate Scott is on board as well. The Sixers won the trade. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? Welcome into Philly Take with RB, number one show for Sixers fans. You know the drill. Hit that like button, subscribe right now, hit the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming content. We're live every game and we're breaking it all down as always. Today we're back and we can finally take a deep breath. We can relax a little bit. The Sixers officially in the win column after taking down the Pacers 120 to 106 on their home floor last night, courtesy of a big late run by James Harden. And he had the place electric, man. He continues the ball out. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of the things that maybe the Sixers still need to work on. All the contributions from the team. We'll take a look at tomorrow and a whole bunch more. But uh, it's nice to be in the win column. It's nice to finally get that W. Honestly, it felt like a must win last night. The Sixers, you know, honestly, were underperforming and that they needed to step up and get a big win. And uh, even though it got a little itchy late, they came back and, uh, you know, put it out of reach. So shout out to the Sixers. I have to, though, start with one of the Sixers rivals um, and and just one of the greatest things going on right now in the NBA. And uh, this is due to high demand. This is not me. I, I go, I log on to Twitter. First thing I see, messages, my feed, everything pointing to that man, Ben Simmons and the Brooklyn Nets. We'll talk about it in just a second. But real quick, shout out. To the sponsor of today's show, Let's Get Checked, is your leading provider for at-home testing kits. They make professional health testing much easier by allowing you to get tested without having to visit a health care provider. You order a test, maybe for a woman that looks like, you know, a fertility test or something like that. Or maybe for a guy, you know, you want to get a hormone test or, or just anything, you know, cholesterol, diabetes, um, just anything that you want to get tested for. Thyroid, for example. Um, whatever you're looking to get tested for, we know it's very important nowadays. You go order the test. They send something like this right to your front doorstep within two to five days. You send it back and, uh, the results are uploaded right away in real time to their app. Also, you can go ahead and, um, you know, schedule a call with someone from their team who will get in contact with you to go over the results. Their labs are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation. Really what they're trying to do is to avoid having that whole long, tiresome process where you have to go to the doctor's office and and try to see if your insurance covers and all that stuff. Really, they expedite the process and they have much more affordable tests. So really, they're changing the industry. Check them out. Their link is down below in the description. We know how important it is to stay upon your health today. Use promo code Philly25, get 25% off your order. Speaking of let's get checked, like I said, we have to check in with the Brooklyn Nets because right now they are uh, they're they're turning on the man already within a couple games within a couple games. Look, I'm not going to sit up here for the entire video and say I told you so. But look, man, I mean, it, <laughs> two games in Nets lose again to the Memphis Grizzlies. They were having a field day, by the way, against, uh, you know, us Sixers fans after we lost a couple games and, and Simmons fouls out yet again. Here are the stats, you know, seven points, three rebounds, only took like five shot attempts um, and gets the six foul, you know, and five turnovers. So, um, you know, I, I go into Twitter and again, people are sending me stuff. And, and this is the first thing I see. This is a Nets, I'm guessing, reporter, media person um, who puts this out. He says, either play Ben Simmons at center or pull him. This offense can't continue. And, you know, look. The Nets are one of our heated rivals. Everybody's been hyping this up, and, and you know, we'll, we'll see them multiple times throughout the year. But honestly, I will continue to repeat what I said. I mean, I am just am not afraid of this team. I'm not afraid of this team. And you're probably up here saying, why are you talking about it? Because everybody continues to try to paint them out as one of our top competitors. I just don't see it. Kevin Durant's one of the greatest players I've ever seen. Kyrie Irving went on the court and and without drama, it looks like one of the most skilled players I've ever seen. But again, Ben Simmons will be the downfall of that team. He's an offensive liability. Shout out to uh, Durant Muse. I mean, I could just keep him coming. I'm not going to go the entire time, like I said. But Durant Muse says, Simmons is actually terrible. Why can't the Nets admit it with me? Watch the game. Please tell me how he is not a liability. Please. I mean, they are already turning on him after three, four games. And 
Look, I, I've been saying this all along. I mean, he is going to be the downfall of that team. They cannot sustain it. It's one of the craziest things you'll ever see. And I'm just, I'm laughing all the way to the bank, man, because look, I, I put my bet in on this before. I said, I'm not scared of this team. And meanwhile, you know, all the Nets fans out there, all, uh, me, myself, and I, and, and all these creators, and, and all, the whole Sixer Nation is waiting for an apology from those Nets fans who were talking heavy. And, uh, you know, what makes it even better is the Philadelphia 76ers, and most importantly, James Harden, uh, last night and throughout the season, just balling out, right? Harden, the Sixers won the trade, okay? The Sixers won the trade. They won the trade. They won the trade. I will continue to say it. I've been saying it the last eight months. Harden this season, almost averaging 27 now after last night, almost 10 assists, eight and a half rebounds, shooting 38% from deep. He's almost had a triple-double in like three games. And honestly, without James Harden last night, I don't know if we win that ball game. The way that, again, he takes over in the fourth quarter. I said we were going to get an efficient version of Harden this year. I didn't know we were going to get the Harden that could ISO whenever you need him to. That could take a flashback to Houston Harden. It has been sensational. He has been massive for this team. And, you know, the the big step back of the game where he ends up dropping Matherin, he kind of stepped on him, but he still kind of dropped him, and Matherin had a tough game. He's a really promising rookie for the Pacers fans out there. Um, but Harden got him, and Harden was on on the midst of a great stretch in the fourth quarter. And Kate Scott calling the game for the Sixers says, "Who won the trade? Who won the trade? She's on board with us, man. Sixers won this trade by a mile, and I have just been saying it for a long, long time. Harden is back, and Simmons is going to cost the Nets. All right, here's the play from last night. Really, to play the game for James Harden, kind of gets a little bit of separation, hesitates for a second, knocks down a three. It is beautiful what James Harden is doing. He's feeling himself. He's hype. And once again, I will continue to preach what I did this entire offseason, and that is that Harden is going to continue to be like this for three reasons, okay? Number one, he's hungry and he's motivated because he bet on himself. He's the one that wanted to get better for the team and wanted to make the team better at the same time. He took a pay cut. He allowed us to bring these players in here thinking that if I go out and have a great year and prove everybody wrong, I'm going to get another contract. He may opt out after this year. Who knows what's going to happen, but he created some flexibility and took a big, massive pay cut and bet on himself. Number two, the Sixers are potentially in championship mode. We think this team, this roster can compete. He wants to be better for the betterment of the team. That'll also increase his wallet and his career as well. Like I said, extend it for another big stretch. And lastly, you know, it's just the the doubt, right? Everybody's down. Everybody was hating on the national stage, on a 10-time All-Star, a former MVP, a guy that has essentially done everything in the game and looked like one of the most prolific scorers in his prime you know, and the only thing he really hasn't done is win a championship. And and again, he wants to win, but, you know, people are counting this man out at age 33. And he's like, you know what? This is my revenge tour. I'm back. Yes, it's going to be a long season. But right now, the way he is playing, he absolutely worked on himself this offseason. His body, his game, he's adding mid ranges. I mean, we can look at these two plays, honestly, two underrated plays, two of my favorites that just make me so happy about his game. Here's the first play. Okay. So, Niang's going to set a, a quick screen. Harden's going to come around. Then he goes right behind the back. Like, you don't see a lot of point guards with that ability, with that IQ to just hit that so quick. And then here's another one. He continues to knock down these mid ranges. They're a, a step back. And it's just like he, he didn't do that last year. He hasn't done it for a long time. He continues to work on his game. It is absolutely beautiful to see. And, and I'm just happy for the guy, man. And I think. Once Embiid gets clicking and, and going, same with Maxi and Embiid's starting to already, this team can be really, really good with the way James Harden is playing right now. He can literally take over games. I didn't think I'd be saying that already. Last night, 29 points, 10 for 18, you know, 11 assists, 9 rebounds. He's doing everything right now. Yes, he's officially back. He had one bad game against the San Antonio Spurs. I still don't think that, uh, you know, we established him enough in that game early on, but you know, he's going to continue to play well. I'm happy for him. Um, in addition to him, Joel Embiid, 26 points last night, 8 for 13. I think Joe's, again, he's getting acclimated. You can see the progression. Yes, Doc said he's going to scale back his minutes. I don't get why he didn't do that from the beginning of the season if he wasn't in condition, but that's a different story. Max, he's been cold. He was 3 for 11 last night, needs to get going. Um, Tobias with his typical 18, but really the story of the game as well is the bench. 
You know, the Sixers bench scored more points in the first quarter last night, 18, than they scored in any complete game this season. I mean, they were at, what, 14 or 15 was their highest for an entire game. They had 18 in the first quarter last night. They finished with, like, what, 34, 35, 37 or something like that. Um, Sixers bench got it done, and and you see how much pressure that takes off of the starting five. It alleviates it late in the first quarter. The starting five's not playing too well. Bench comes right in, goes on a run. Um, Sixers were dominating this team. Like I said, they needed to come out with a convincing win. Now, the Pacers started to bring it back late third quarter. Matherin was, was cold. You know, he was 0 for 7 at one point in this game, and then he starts to heat up. You got the former Sixer, TJ McConnell, getting a couple plucks in there, and you know, Joel Embiid had a bad turnover early in the fourth, and he's getting lazy, and Embiid picks up five fouls, and, you know, the Pacers bring it down to 11, 10, 9, 8, and you're like, oh my gosh, here we go again, but that is where James Harden comes in, takes over the game, and says, nope, we are finishing it right here. You hold Halliburton to 19 points, he got the, a lot of those in garbage time, Buddy healed with 18, same there. I mean, Smith 17, Matherin at 17, but again, most of those came in garbage time on, on the midst of a comeback. Um, so really, you know, the Sixers did a good job. I still think their defensive communication needs to up it a lot. I saw a lot of points in this game where, you know, whether it's Paul Reed and George Yang fighting over a rebound and losing the ball and getting pissed about it, or, you know, guys not communicating, losing a guy in an easy pick and roll. There are still those things for a team that says they want to be a top five defensive team in the league. I still need to see improvement in that area. Uh, but I did feel as the game went on yesterday, the defense did tighten up and get better. And obviously with that energy in the building with James Harden playing like that, it just seems like they really locked in. Niang had a nice steal late. Uh, Maxi hit a big three late to help us, you know, push it over the edge. And uh, overall, the Sixers defense was much better. Still has a long way to go. Uh, but yeah, they, you know, they were definitely much better. And then the other thing is just really the offensive identity. I still am seeing like spurts during games where it's maxi heavy and then it's hard. And, but you know, sometimes these guys really don't know like what the plan is. And I think doc needs to continue to establish that plan. But I did like in the fourth quarter, how again, James Harden was riding it and they said, all right, go take the ball and do you, you know, but I think early in the game, you need to establish these guys better and you might have to end up mixing up that combination of starting five because, you know, at some points or at least so far in the first four games, they really have not looked too comfortable together. So maybe you start looking to explore, how can I get these two with some bench guys, a, a maxi Harden or a Harden and bead or a maxi and bead or whatever. Um, you're probably going to have to look into some possibilities with that if this continues. But overall, I was very happy. I thought the Sixers came out and, you know, did what they had to do. Did what they had to do. I know they dominated late in the game um, and they took it over. Now, again, I will say that this was probably a combination also of the Pacers missing shots because, again, early in this game, I did not see good defensive communication and the Pacers did have a lot of wide open threes that they did miss. They shot 27% last night, which will not cut it in an NBA game, but they're young. You know, they're they're on the uprise. They're not even close to winning. So this is the team you just had to take care of business with. Another one on the schedule. And that is what the Sixers did. They handle their business. They get it done. James Harden, once again, continues to impress, almost notched a triple-double. And uh, the bench finally stepped up, and the rest of the team did what they had to do. It's a great time, man. It's a great time because last year, throughout the offseason, they, they still continued to talk down on James. They keep painting up the Nets as finals contenders, when in reality, Harden is back. Harden is back. And once it gets clicking, once it gets going, hopefully in the right direction, um, Harden could be a really big contributor for this team, especially with the way he's playing right now to, uh, you know, really bringing us over the top. So those are really just my thoughts. Give me all yours down below. What are you noticing about the Sixers team? What do you notice about the way Joel's playing James Maxi? What else would you do different? I want to hear from all of you. Give me your thoughts down below. Like I said, we're live every game. Then we break it down afterwards. Appreciate everybody tuning in Sixers in the W column. And that is the most important thing. We will be back against the Raptors tomorrow night. What do the Sixers need to do? Two in a row in Toronto. They need to get at least one win and hopefully two. They need to make a statement. You know that team's going to bring the tenacity, especially on the defensive side. Sixers need to punch them in the mouth. We will see what happens. Hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, I will catch you all on the next one, man. Peace. <laughs>